Give me a moment here. Praise the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I got one more message to deliver. And then I will be out of your hair. <laughs> the name of my message is Jesus is God. We all have a spirit living in a fleshly body. If we are saved when our body dies, our spirit goes to be with God in heaven and our physical bodies are buried. Our spirit and our physical bodies are separated, yet they are joined together while on earth. And at the rapture, our spirit will be united with a new glorified, glorified and imperishable body. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 36 to 49. You see, Jesus is a, you know, he, he has a spirit. But his spirit is different from ours. His spirit is divine in nature. And the spirit was placed into a earthly body. Jesus is the Son of God. And as God's Son, He also holds God's nature. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 3 says, He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of His nature. You see, Jesus was the Son of Mary and as her son, he also has her nature. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 7 says that Jesus holds a very, the very nature of God and of man. Jesus' spirit is divine because his father is divine. Just like an earthly child takes on the traits of his earthly father, we are also called children of God, but we are without his divine nature because we are adopted into his family. See, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the enemy does not tell you. He doesn't, he doesn't tell you all of this information. He don't tell you none of this stuff because he don't want you to know the truth. In fact, the enemy just wants you to know What you want to know, what you think is right. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5 says, He predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in an accordance with his pleasure and will. You should see also Romans chapter 8 verse 23 and 15 in Galatians chapter 4 verse 5. But the church is the bride of Jesus. Jesus calls himself our bridegroom. Isaiah 62 verse 5. When the bride gets married, she calls her husband's parents, mom and dad. It's through the bride's relationship with their son that she becomes their daughter. It's through our relationship with Jesus that we become Children of God. But ladies and gentlemen, if we're, if we're living in sin, how can we become children of God? How can we be children of the light if we live in darkness? The Bible says, he who says that they have no sin, they fool themselves. God does not go by standards of man. It's not like you can obey the authorities of Somerville, New Jersey, or obey the laws of this land and still think that you're going to go to God because you say, God, I, I was good. I was a good person. What is good? What you think is good? That's an important question. But you see, God has, he, he is not just any father-in-law. He fully loves us and embraces us. He takes us in and adopts us as his very own. So to say God is the father that you never had. We can call him father and we become joint heirs 
with Jesus. Romans 8, verse 14 through 17. We are not just a random bride. Jesus picked up off the street. God created us specifically for his son. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Just think about that, ladies and gentlemen, the very fact that before you were born, God knew you. That's proof, ladies and gentlemen, that not only is he real, but that he loves you. Who do you know knew you before you were born? The Bible says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, the Bible says, but you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession. You know, we can decide to marry. We, we, who are we? Who we decide to marry will affect the, the rest of our lives. I'm going to give you a quick analogy of a kingdom to help show you the importance of marrying a Jesus who is divine in nature over a Jesus who is not. Ladies and gentlemen, Jehovah Witnesses, we all know them. And you know, Jehovah Witnesses believe Jesus is our Savior, but they do not believe that Jesus is God. They are engaged to someone named Jesus, but not to the divine king. The Bible says Jesus is the Prince of Peace. The king of kings. If you want to live in a king's palace and rule and reign with him when you have no royal blood, then you need to marry the prince who will become king. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 12. Are you listening? We need to make sure we are engaged to the person with royal blood and not just to a knockoff who shares the same name as the king for a common purpose possesses no authority in the kingdom it's important that you come to Jesus come to know Jesus the Jesus of the Bible the son with the divine spirit and sinless blood and not just any person named Jesus. Second Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 through 4 warns us that people can be deceived into believing in another Jesus. A different spirit and a different gospel. Jehovah God is equivalent with Jesus. The Bible says Jesus is Jehovah God. Some Bible's translations will have the word Jehovah written as Lord. If the original word is Jehovah, I will pit it in uh, uh, parentis after the word Lord in these those verses so you know it is speaking about Jehovah God the Bible says every knee shall bow you walking around and every knee shall bow the Bible says it's to God whom every knee shall bow the tongue shall swear allegiance in the Old Testament Isaiah is saying it is, Je it is Jehovah. And in the New Testament, Paul says, Jesus is the one to whom every knee shall bow and tongue confess. In Isaiah 45, verse 21, it says, Jehovah God is speaking. He is calling himself a righteous God and Savior. He is speaking in the first person. Notice how the enemy isn't 
leading you to know Jesus. Let me see the uh, live stream real quick. <laughs> Just keep it. Okay. Praise the Lord. Look at what he says in Isaiah chapter 45, verse 23. To me, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Paul explains the God Isaiah is talking about in Philippians chapter 2, verse 10 through 11. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And you know what they say today? Oh, yeah, I don't care about all that. You're just too loud. <laughs> In Zechariah chapter 11 verse 4, it says, Jehovah God is speaking. He is talking in the first person and is describing events that happened to Jesus. Je uh, Ze Zechariah chapter 11, verse 12 through 13. So they paid me 30 pieces of silver, and the Lord Jehovah said to me, throw it to the potter. The handsome price at which they valued me. So I took the 30 pieces of silver, I threw them to the potter at the house of the Lord. Matthew says they paid 30 pieces of silver for Jesus. Matthew 26, 14 through 15, the Bible says, Then one of the twelve whose name was Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and said, What will you give me if I deliver him to you? And they said to him, 30 pieces of silver. And the next example, Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1, confirms Jehovah God is the one speaking and is referencing himself as Jesus again. The Bible says, And I will pour out in the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and supplication. They will look on me in the one they have pierced. Just think, listen, ladies and gentlemen. God today is, is telling you. He's telling you. The time is now. Now, people don't want to listen. They're going to find out what hell is like. People complain about their life because they are apart from God. Notice how no one complains about their life when they're with God. I don't complain about my life. I praise God in season and out of season. I thank God when I'm in the fire and when I'm in a comfortable state, I should say. Because I know it's God is in control. I know that whatever I get in life, it was the best. It's the best. I know that God won't shortchange me. It's the best. And I know that when you walk with Christ, you're going to get the best. God is no respecter of persons. You're going to get the best because he loves you. And some people say, well, I, I'm just taking a break from the message real quick. I'm just going to go off a, a, off a beaten path and say this. Most people say, well, God doesn't love me. Yeah, because he, God ain't giving you what you want. But he will give you what you need. Notice how every parent that's good to their children, a parent that loves their children, get out the street. Don't do that. Stop that. S be quiet. Sit down. Notice how the parent is trying to, trying to chastise the child, try to tell the child what's right. Today, we're told evil is good. Yeah, two men getting married. That's fine. You know why we think that's fine? It's because we don't know what God says. God says that's not fine. God says, when you practice sin, practice abominations, you're cursed. You're cursed. But God says, no matter what you have done in your life, you can be forgiven. Some people may feel like they're not, they're, they're not good enough for God. I don't think I ever felt like that, but I know some people who, who felt like that. They're just not good enough for God. What does God want with me? I'm, I'm an old, dirty crack of dust. What does God want with me? God wants everything with you. <laughs> God leaves the 99 for the one. 
for one. For one. I'm from, I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming far away, ladies and gentlemen. I'm coming far away. Then in John chapter 19, verse 33 through 34, he says, it was Jesus whom they pierced. A soldier pierced the side of Jesus. John chapter 19, verse 37. And again, another scripture says, they will look on him whom they have pierced. And the next verse, Jehovah God is once again speaking in the first person, saying a messenger will prepare the way before him. I believe Malachi chapter 3, right? Malachi chapter 3. 3 verse 1, Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Matthew tells us John the Baptist was the messenger who prepared the way before Jehovah. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12 through, uh, excuse me, Matthew chapter 11 verse 10 to 11, this is he whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. Truly I say to you, whom th whose those born of women, there was arisen no one greater than John the Baptist. In Isaiah, chapter, uh, Isaiah, Jehovah is, the book of Isaiah, Jehovah is addressing his Redeemer as Jehovah. He refers to himself in the first person by saying, I am the first and the last. This phrase is both used by Jesus and God the Father. Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, Jehovah, the King of Israel, his, and his Redeemer, the Lord Jehovah of hosts. I am the first and the last, and there is no God beside me. Revelation chapter 1, verse 17 to 18. When I saw him, I fell at his feet like a dead man, and he placed his right hand on me, saying, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last and the living one. And I was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and of Hades. The Bible, the Bible makes it clear. Revelations 1 through 5, uh, excuse me, Revelations 1, 5 through 7 makes it clear that these next verses are references, referencing to Jesus. Verse 8 says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come. God is real. Oh my goodness, God is so real. Look at the birds in the air. Whatever these things are, I, I guess they, they look like bats. But look at them. Look, take, ladies and gentlemen, if you're if you're looking, look at this. Look at these bats. I, they look like bats to me. Take a look at them. Look how they fly. And God still cares for them. They they need to sow no reap. And God still cares for them. Look at them flying around. So the so so it's not a question. But how much more greater are you than they? I just want to stop right there and say that. That's all I want to say. I just want to make a point there. He says, I am the Alpha and Omega, says the Lord God who is and who was and who is to come. The Almighty. In Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, Jehovah God is speaking and says that he made all things. Hold up. The Bible said God made all things. God made all things. John says Jesus made all things. Isaiah 44 verse 24, are you listening? Thus says the Lord, your Redeemer who formed you from the womb. I am the Lord Jehovah who has made all things, who alone stretches out the heavens, who by myself spreadeth out the earth. Hey, excuse me, sir. You're living... Oh, oh you're a man. <laughs> Sorry, ma'am. You're living on God's land. Right? Amen. <laughs> you're living on his land, right? This is his land. So John makes it clear. He is talking about Jesus. In chapter 1, John verse 1 Excuse me, John chapter 1, verse 3. 
all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made. So why are we worshiping money? Why are we worshiping fast cars? Why are we worshiping houses? All things were made through him. In Deuteronomy it says, Jehovah, God is Lord of the Sabbath, and Mark says it is Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 14. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord, Jehovah your God. Mark 2.28, therefore, if the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. So it is evident, ladies and gentlemen, that the Bible states Jesus is the Jehovah of the Old Testament because Jesus is God. Now notice how most religions, they don't want to worship Jesus as God. Thomas called Jesus God. John 2.28 Excuse me, John 20, verse 28. Thomas answered him, my Lord, my God. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ to them that have obtained like precious faith with him through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So if you're lost and you're confused and you're trying to figure out what I'm talking about, I'm just telling you, you should put your faith in God because Jesus Christ is God. Isaiah called Jesus God. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And his government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Man, people are so quiet around here. I mean, you guys should be celebrating right now because this is good news. The Savior is here. He died on the cross so that you can have a way. <laughs> Matthew called Jesus God. Matthew 1, 23. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Paul called Jesus God. Titus chapter 2, verse 13. Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't be confused by the word and, and in between God and Savior. Jesus is God. He is the God who will have the glorious appearing, and He is our Savior. You don't look to, you don't need to look to anything else. You just need to look to Jesus. You just need to look to Jesus. 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 Say the name. Jesus Christ. Because He loves you. Like I said before, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what you have done, God says He will forgive you. He will forgive you. He will forgive you. Matthew chapter 24, verse 30. Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. For, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 14, the Bible says that you keep the commandment, the commandments without strain or reproach, without staying or reapproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can go on and on and on. But let me, let's hear it from the man himself. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm, I'm on this corner. I'm making a case to you. I'm presenting my case to you. Let's hear it from the man himself. The Jews wanted to stone Jesus because he was claiming to be God. John chapter 10, verse 30 through 33. I and the Father are one. The Jews picked up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from the Father, for which of them are you going to stone me? The Jews answered and said to him, It is not of good works that we are going to stone you, but for blasphemy, ah, because you being a man, make yourself God. 
Jesus again referenced himself as God. Revelation 22, 13. I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. He is repeating what Jehovah God said in Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord Jehovah, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord Jehovah of hosts, the Lord God of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. Besides me, there is no other God. So when people talking about some, oh, um, you want to be a Buddhist? It's kind of pretty cool stuff here. <laughs> no. Because God himself said that there is no other God. Notice how Satan wants you to serve anything else but God. We don't care if you're a Catholic. We don't care if you're a, 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 a Mormon or, 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 or a Muslim. We don't care about that. Satan don't care about that. But the moment you, you turn to Christianity, oh, this is a problem now. Notice how in the world they're only attacking the Christians. Ladies and gentlemen, God wants your eyes to open. He wants your eyes to open because he's trying to tell you something. You got to receive the message. You got to receive the message. He is repeating. God and Jesus both call themselves by the name of God I am. In Exodus 3, when Moses wanted the name of God, Jehovah God calls himself I am. Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Jesus himself, I am. John chapter 8, verse 57, oh, 58, oh, okay. John chapter 8, verse 58, so the Jews, should I say 57? The Jews, so the Jews said to him, you are not yet 50 years old. And have you seen Abraham? And you have seen Abraham? Jesus said to, him, to them, truly, truly, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. So they picked up stones to throw it at him. John chapter 8, verse 5. Uh, 24. It's a lot of scriptures to remember, ladies and gentlemen. For if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Father God called Jesus God. Oh, it goes deeper, ladies and gentlemen. Here is an excellent verse. Father God Reference himself as God and also reference his son as God. In this verse, Father God is speaking to Jesus. Look at this. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 8 through 9. But to of the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever the, 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 the scepter of uprightness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God, Jesus, your God, the Father, has anointed you with the oil of gladness beyond your companions. Ooh, Songs, chapter 110, verse 1. Ladies and gentlemen, I can go on and on. Let me end with this because it's getting dark and I don't want to be here too long because people are going to start getting annoyed. But I, I just want to wrap this up. And I just, I just want to do a, a quick call for repentance. A call for repentance, ladies and gentlemen.